So I'm going to start off with just a couple of quick slides um, on how we believe vanadium is critical for the transition to a low carbon economy with some background sort of high level numbers on vanadium uh, supply around the world. Um, world vanadium resources are estimated to be greater than 63 million tons with reserves around 26 million tons. Those reserves are sufficient to meet current demand for more than 150 years. So there's plenty of vanadium out there. You see in terms of reserves, China leads the way with almost 40%, followed by Australia, Russia, and South Africa with others lagging further behind. Production is also dominated by China, as well as South Africa and Russia. The three of them together account for 90%. Um, the growth rate for China was 6% in production, 2% for the rest of the world, uh, with China in 2022 accounting for more than 60% of all global vanadium production around the world. Same thing with consumption. China is also the leading consumer of vanadium uh, with a greater annual vanadium consumption than the rest of the world. Uh, China's rebar is the largest application for vanadium with 70% of all the vanadium consumed in China in rebar. The increase in production of, a, of the um, upgrading of the rebar standard in China has been driving that. And on the right hand side there, you'll see that the vanadium flow battery in China is now worth 7.6% of all uses of vanadium in China. As we mentioned earlier, and you saw in the video, um, the vanadium used in the flow batteries has been accelerating. China again leads the way. In 2021, just under 4% of, of vanadium used in China was in energy storage. It's up to 11% in the first half of this year. Globally, 2.4% in 2021 is now up to 6.7% in 2023 first half. So tremendous growth in the battery already in the last two years, which tracks with what um, Glidehouse Resources had said would be the, the, the forecast for the next 10 years. I think Mikhail mentioned this. We have a map on our website where you can see some of the projects that have been deployed or under construction, contracted, or announced. If you go to our website at www.vanatech.org, you can see the map and, and click on any of these projects for further details. Again, as we mentioned, this Guidehouse Insight study is uh, projecting significant growth for the battery over the next 10 years, uh, more than doubling today's global market for vanadium by the year 2031. I'm going to do this very quickly um, because we're running short on time. Outside of the battery, vanadium does play a key role in the clean energy transition, uh, particularly through the use of how more vanadium allows you to use less steel, 10 to 40 percent weight savings from from steel. All those issues lead to lower carbon emission reductions. In one example, just on rebar alone, um, vanadium micro alloying of steel with um, results in savings of upwards of 0.4% globally in carbon emissions, 1% in China, 0.19% in the EU. That is just from vanadium in rebar alone. That's the same as 30,000 passenger cars taken off the roads, uh, 300,000 barrels of oil taken off, or the equivalent of 30,000 wind turbines running for an entire year. So the, the use of vanadium just in rebar has quite a dramatic savings uh, according to the recent study. If you add to that the, the battery, um, in the, when coupled with a wind source, operational batteries are projected to save 2.13 metric tons of carbon dioxide over their lifetime. That's the equivalent to 2.6 million acres of forest. So uh, we believe that AIM def definitely has a role in decarbonization, not just in the battery, in the steel sector as well. When you combine them together, vanadium's approach and uh, an impact is, is much greater. I'm going to now turn things over to Terry Perlis, who's going to give us an update and review of the market analysis. We've got a lot of detail in these slides, 